well, good morning. You can't make this stuff up. I think Tesla at this point could cure cancer, prove that they've cured cancer and have the pills ready to go and the stock still would not respond. So um, this is Randy Kirk. We're going to be talking about the earnings call that's coming up today. First, we have the reporting around one o'clock, a little after one o'clock. And then we have, of course, the earnings call uh, where we get the questions answered that are near and dear to our hearts. I have a feeling that they're not going to answer the ones that are most dear and, near and dear to my heart, but maybe maybe we'll get a few, a few answers later today. Um, let's talk about what is happening right now in the stock market with regard to Tesla. I am not an investment advisor. Um, uh, this is not inv investment advice and do your own homework. This is my take on how the day is going so far and um, what to expect between now and the end of uh, the day. <laughs> so let's take it one step at a time. Tesla has had a, a history of the price running up prior to earnings and then getting destroyed during the earnings call. I suspect that there's a, at least a little bit of folks being aware of that history today. And so there's not been much of a run up. Uh, it, Last week we had the run-up. Monday we had some some good some good solid run-up, but then it kind of petered out. Uh, if you look at the market, though, the market was doing the same thing, and so Tesla's been following the market a lot, with maybe a, a slight advantage to Tesla over the last couple of weeks. But nothing compared to the good news that Tesla's been getting. And so, if you've been following my videos the last couple of days. I've been talking about the fact that as long as there is a risk off mentality and as the, the money, the cash is going to sit on the sidelines and there's more cash sitting on the sidelines right now than maybe at any time in history, according to uh, Kathy Wood. So the money will come back. The money will come back on when people are starting to believe again. And as long as we get negative responses uh, to uh, earnings like yesterday with poor guidance from Microsoft, uh, that's going to impact the market and cause them to go back into a fear mode. So that's going to affect Tesla as well. And it means that even amazing news is not going to move the stock. If you look this morning, Tesla is basically moving with the, the macro. I don't look at the overall macro for Tesla. I look at the other growth stocks. And I can see this morning, once again, that that macro uh, for the growth stocks, Tesla's moving right along with it. Absolutely no bump for the Sparks announcement, which is just crazy. But let's look at the good news for Tesla right now so that we can just put it in context as to how cr crazy it is that the stock is sitting here in kind of neutral uh, given this list of amazing news. So number one, Report after report after report is coming out how they are the number one brand, either the number one EV brand, the number one brand period, the number one luxury brand in market, an important market after important market through Europe, through the United States, through South Korea, through China, um, Australia. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Number two, the new Lathrop factory appears to be printing money. Now, we're going to find out a little bit today in the earnings report with regard to Lathrop. We probably won't find out as much as we'd want to know, uh, but clearly within the next three or four months, five months, six months, we'll begin to see some very clear evidence of where Lathrop is, how much margins are really in the Lathrop products. And if it's what we think it is, it is a money printing machine with 50 plus percent margins and with uh, potentially uh, $10 billion in earnings out of that one facility uh, per year, <laughs> not per year. So um, then you move down the line. Number three would be the IRA, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, so oddly named. Uh, nobody's counting that in. It's going to be at least in the billions and billions and billions of dollars of benefit to Tesla's bottom line. Nobody's including it anywhere in their projections. I mean, nobody is except years truly, I certainly believe that it's going to be uh, billions and billions next year. And, and I've done some reporting on that, which you can, which you've seen in, in previous, uh, in previous of these uh, YouTube videos. Uh, number three, the incentives are back on at Germany. So where we have the Berlin plant, where we have the Berlin plant, probably going from 
uh, adding another 300,000 units this year uh, to production, maybe more. Um, the uh, incentive is back on in the home country of that plant and uh, $7,500 in uh, roughly in US equivalent. Uh, that can't hurt uh, sales in Germany this coming year. Uh, next would be uh, the two new factories that we just heard about that are going in in Sparks, Nevada. This is huge news. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. Uh, commodity prices are dropping. This should be massive news for the market in general. This should be incredible news for Tesla. Uh, they've dropped their prices, but they've also had uh, lowering of their costs. We don't know exactly when that impact will happen. Nobody does. Lots and lots of pundits coming out with their numbers today and saying, well, I don't know where they are with regard to what's the price of lithium in the cars they're making today versus next week. We don't know. We just don't know. And there's no way we could know, even with detailed reporting, we wouldn't really know how this is all going to affect margins. All we know is long term, if if commodities are coming down and stay down, this is going to be a good thing for uh, margins for Tesla. And then finally, the actual potential to build 2.5 million cars in 2023, and then 3.75 in 2024, and then 5 million in 2025 or more. Um, yeah, everybody says I'm crazy. How can they build 2.5 million? I don't see how they don't build 2.5 million, but I'll hang with uh, the middle ground at 2.3. It's certainly a lot more than the 1.9 to 2 million units that so many pundits on Wall Street, as well as in the Twitter, uh, in the Twitter fandom, uh, the folks that are producing these numbers are suggesting it'll be 2 million or less. I don't see how they get there. Uh, 2.3 would be my middle number. I don't can't imagine it being less than 2.3 million produced. And I think they'll sell every car they produce. That's a big increase. It's a million, almost a million increase over last year. Um, it's going to have to have an impact. Okay. But Mr. Market looks at all that and goes, oh, well, meh. <laughs> you know, it's just not responding because they're not interested in the risk side of things right now. If we were in the risk on environment that we were in a year and a half ago, each one of these things would have caused the stock to go up and we would be probably back over uh, the highs, the all time highs, uh, maybe even by a lot. All right. So let's talk about the Reno announcement. <laughs> There's a clear cut path to amazing earnings out of this Reno facility. Elon had the reporting yesterday was that they were going to do 100 gigawatts of battery production at Reno. Well, that'd be great. That'd be very huge benefit to the margins as Tesla begins to use their own batteries as opposed to their, uh, their uh, uh, third party manufacturer batteries. Now, Elon made it very clear in the uh, video. I'll, I'll try to remember to uh, post it below. He did a video with the governor of Nevada uh, yesterday, and he says, look, we're still going to buy every battery we can buy from our current suppliers, but we're also going to make a lot of batteries for ourselves. So yesterday, it was going to be 100 gigawatts. Well, no, he says the long-term plan is to do 500 gigawatts in Reno of the 4680s. Now, you don't plan for the 100 gigawatts or the 500 gigawatts unless Austin is doing fine in terms of ramping batteries down there. You don't do all these things. You don't make these plans unless he's 100% certain that the 4680 line is going to be fine in Austin. So we're talking about 500 gigawatt potential. Maybe it takes till 2025, 26 before they get there. But at $35 a kilowatt hour, at a, per kilowatt rather, uh, that'd be $17 billion in profit. And that doesn't count the profit that they will make on the battery for, uh, by virtue of uh, not buying it from a third party. And it doesn't count the $10 for putting it in packs. The $5 for putting it in packs gives you another, uh, 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 five, see, I'm sorry, five gives you another $5 billion in profit for a total of $22 billion in incentive profits alone just in Reno. Um, that's just, it, that's uh, $6 a share. Um, so I don't know uh, how people are not bumping up the stock this morning 
uh, as a result of just that information. Then in addition to that, he says, this will be the full production facility, uh, the mass production facility for the semi-truck. So far, he's only talked about 50,000 trucks. He did not in increase that number or restate that number in the uh, video last night, uh, but uh, we'll take the 50,000 number. Uh, say they're only 200,000 a piece. I think they'll sell them for more. Uh, that would be 10 billion in sales. Let's say it's 30% margins. I think it'll be more. There's 3 billion in additional profits are darn close to a dollar a share. No movement on the stock, nothing, zip zero. I don't get it, it's crazy. But let's talk about what happens later in the day then. Uh, let's say that uh, now we've got the uh, the earnings report comes out and uh, kind of everybody's talking about a dollar ten a share. Let's say it comes out a dollar a dollar a share instead of a dollar ten or ninety nine cents or something like that. Oh, Tesla will get punished in a risk off environment. That's what happens. So you can guarantee if they miss the number, they'll get punished. Now, if they Break the number. Let's say that they did a dollar fifteen, a dollar twenty. Some people have it as high as a dollar fifty because maybe the margins were a lot higher than anybody thinks. Maybe the energy numbers start to show up. But let's say that it's a dollar fifteen, a dollar twenty, dollar thirty. I don't think it'll move the market at all. Or if it does, just a little tiny bit. Maybe it'll go uh, up a dollar two, or maybe a percent uh, or two. But what what we know for sure is is if it misses, it's going to be a You'll see the after hours go down. And if it's a win, uh, you'll see the market maybe give it a little bit. Where it really counts and where we've seen over the years for Apple as well, this happened for Apple when they were a go-go company. And now we're seeing it with Tesla is that the uh, when we get to the earnings call and the questions are answered and they're answered, you can just watch the market go up and down, the after hours market go up and down based on what people are saying at any given moment. It's kind of fun. If you've never done that before, you might want to do it. Have your have your uh, your, your Google thing open to show what the stock market is doing after hours and then watch the conversation as it goes. So what we've seen is guidance is the thing that kills the, kills the opportunity or kills the stock. Um, my guess is that the guidance today is going to be good, but it's probably going to be meh. And we're probably going to see almost no movement in the stock as a result of the guidance today. Even as Elon talks about all the great things that we just discussed, and he might have more great things that I didn't even put on the list. If we don't get some kind of, if he says, yes, we'll continue to have 50% growth year over year on average, and that is the continuing guidance, that will be a non-starter, might even hurt the stock. If he gives us a number over 2 million, um, I think uh, 2 million cars uh, for this year, I think that'll be a help. If we get some negative content with regard to Cybertruck, that's gonna hurt. So my, my hope is that he says that uh, he continues to say that it, they'll begin production or expect to begin production late second quarter or very early third quarter. If he says late third quarter or into fourth quarter, that's going to hurt the stock. I think we can be pretty sure of that. Um, if we uh, get uh, any guidance on Lathrop, that could help because there's a lot of retail investors now that are pretty excited about it and maybe the street will start to get it. That probably won't happen in one day. But if we get some guidance that suggests that we are close to being fully ramped uh, or it's very, you know, we're, we're getting there to the full 40 gigawatt hour capability, um, and if he gives any guidance with regard to margins, which I doubt will happen, it's almost zero chance that's going to happen, uh, then that could we could see a bump from that. But if he just says, hey, uh, Lathrop's doing great and doesn't give us any real information, uh, then nothing, of course. Uh, the other thing uh, would be guidance on 4680. Uh, I consider and say all day long that they wouldn't do Reno uh, if, it, if, if they were having any problems at Austin with 4680. But wouldn't it be nice to say, I'm sure it'll be asked, would it be nice to hear that 4680 is doing amazing at Austin, that they're very happy with the, re, with the, the current production um, and that they expect to be fully ramped to 100 gigawatt uh, production by the end of the year or something like that. That'd be, that, would, that would potentially actually, I think that would be one. Cybertruck and that one are more sexy. Uh, I think those are the two that are more likely to move the numbers if there was some good guidance that you could really uh, get your teeth into. So I hope that uh, this is helpful. Um, I uh, will report again later today uh, after the actual earnings come out 
I will probably do a, a quick video about what the earnings were, what the effects might be, and then I will definitely do some kind of reporting tonight after the earnings call, uh, because this is uh, one of the most uh, exciting times uh, for me ever in uh, watching Tesla over the years. And I think the earnings call, it could be, uh, you know, uh, Elon said it would be epic. Let's see if it is. So like it if you liked it. Uh, subscribe. Come join my Patreon group. We're getting some really interesting members. Just got a really uh, top YouTuber yesterday. So come on, join, join with me. Uh, we've got work to do. This has been Randy Kirk. Really great talking to you.